Hello, students. Uh, this is an extra lecture on uh, things that we mm, I didn't get to uh, last Thursday. Uh, and it continues to the whole bin, bin, balls into bins uh, treatment of um, the kind of taking a lens over all the counting problems mm, as if everything was throwing balls into bins. So it will be a review of what we already looked at, but like at this with using this different lens. Um, and also I will talk about the uh, inclusion exclusion principle, uh, which we didn't cover and, and this will not be on the test. So um, I hope you will find it interesting and you, I'm sure you will find it useful. Um, uh, but uh, be, uh, you know, be, feel comfortable that um, that that part is not on the test. Okay, all right. So let's go. Let's go into it. Um, let's see. Okay, let me get a better uh, pointer here. Okay. So um, I'll make this quadrant of possible uh, solutions uh, to the general problems where I have a bunch of bins M and a bunch of balls, N, which I'm throwing into the bins. And every bin is different. And balls in some of these versions would be distinguishable, like in here. Think of them as different color every ball. Or indistinguishable, uh, all the balls are gray. OK? So it doesn't matter which ball went to bin one and which ball went to bin two. The only thing that matters is the count, how many. OK? So uh, let's look at these counting problems uh, divided in this way. Uh, so let's first look at this one. I have distinguishable balls, okay? So it's like these, okay? But uh, I have a limit that, oh, uh, oh, you know what? No, sorry. I will actually start with indistinguishable balls. So uh, I have five bins as my M and three identical balls, that's my N. How many ways are there to throw balls into the, into the bins if you have the constraint that once you throw a ball into a bin, that bin is gone, like you cannot throw more. And the balls are identical. Okay, so this is basically like, I'm just selecting three bins. Right, I just have to select three bins. That's that's the that's the bins that the balls go to. Uh, so it's choosing three bins out of five, so it's five choose three, right? So the general solution is m choose n. If you have this constraint and your balls are all gray, okay, and you can only choose uh, through at most one into a bin, right? What happens if they become colored? So if the balls are not identical, um, like so. Well, I can use the previous solution because let's just think of this as throwing gray balls into the bins and then permuting them and then suddenly giving them color, which how many ways are there? Three factorial, right? Because it's the permutations of the distinguishable balls now uh, that all the permutations will count, right? So I'm choosing three out of five bins and then ordering the balls, uh, right, within them. So three. So this will be five choose three times three factorial. So it's a number of three permutations of the set of five, right? So if you squint your eyes, what are you choosing here? I'm choosing the bins. And how many? Three, because that's how many balls there are. And if I just number the balls, then this corresponds to an ordered choice of bins. Like if the green guy is my first ball, then this would be the first bin chosen. If the purple is in second, then bin four is the next one chosen. And if red is number three, then bin three is the next one chosen. So this, if you sort of think of this differently, of ordered choice of three bins. 
then you immediately get this formula, right? But it's an equivalent way of thinking of this. So if the balls are distinguishable, then it becomes an N permutation out of the M bins. Because I'm choosing N out of M bins in an ordered way. Whereas here, I just chose them unorderedly. It's the cassette that matters of which bins were hit because balls are the same in this row. Okay, let's remove these limits and see what happens now, right? So this was under the, 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 the first methods of counting, right? Like the N permutations and combinations, right? Subsets basically are this version of the balls into bin problem. What if I remove the limit? So let's look first at distinguishable balls, right? The balls are colored and I'm throwing them into these bins and now I don't have an, a limit. So basically every ball, I throw it unconstrained without any um, concern for other balls. So basically each ball is thrown independently so it has five choices. So uh, it's like this, right? Five choices for every ball. I have three of them. So this is the general answer, right? So because basically this is the problem of um, having as many choices as balls there are and the choice is always for every ball one out of M. So there's m choices per ball and you multiply these choices n times because that's how many balls you have. All right, what about if the balls now are become all gray? Like so, right? So you're throwing them without constraint, but they're all the same. So it's as if each ball throw just chooses the multiplicity of the bin. Some are not chosen at all. Some are chosen once. This one is chosen twice. So what, what does this re resemble? Bins are your flavors and the balls are your donuts, right? So this is a choice of three donuts of one of bin two type and two of bin four type. So it's choosing three items out of five categories. I can choose, you know, I have to choose three bins because there's three balls and I can choose them on any of these categories, like three of these or maybe one of the, the, this and two of these, right? That's what the balls do to the bins. Uh, so this is the donut flavor uh, problem. I'm, it's the, the choosing N I, items out of M types. So I take my items plus the types minus one, choose the number of types minus one, right? Because this is again, how do we do this? It's the number of bit strings uh, whose total length is balls and bins and divisions between flavors, right? Between types minus one, because th there is only four divisions, right? M minus one over either n or m minus one. This will be equivalent expressions, right? So, uh, so this mm, quadrant is the donut flavor problem uh, reappearing. What if I had this constraint now that it's like a, well, it's not a generalization really, it's, it's a different type of constraint. I want same number of balls in every bin. Okay, so now for this to work, like the number of balls has to be a multiple of the number of bins, right? Otherwise you could not place the same number, but balls are here distinguishable. So they, they're all different. Labels would say different number or different color. And the question is, uh, which color I'm putting where, All right? So which would this, again, it's one of our counting problems that we have seen. 
you can solve it by this is a, how many of these choices there are as many as there are permutations of all balls right because i line them up and i can permute them but not all the permutations matter because the internal permutations within a bin don't really change anything if i permute all of them so that all of them stay but only these two switch positions it's the same choice of uh, placing these colored balls into bins right so i have to divide so ignore permutations within bins i have to divide the total number of permutations of all the balls n of them by internal permutations within the, each bin how many balls are in each bin n over m right the number of balls over the number of bins factorial because that's how many permutations within a bin you can make and why do i raise it to the m power because there are m bins so i have to divide out these permutations internal permutations per each bin separately right so that's the k to one function that takes every permutation of n balls into only those permutations that matter as in they ignore the internal permutations within the bin of balls within each bin right that's how many you have to you have to remove for that and again this is the problem we have c right so this is um this the, uh, we 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 have seen uh this problem it's the problem of um of ordering uh right but uh, uh the internal permutation doesn't matter so where do we see this problem like how many words can you find with uh, can you form using the word mississippi using the letters contained in the word mississippi there is a bunch of s's and a bunch of i's and to p's right and you can permute all the letters but then you have to remove the internal permutations of all the identical letters which are all the s's all the i's all the p's these are the uh it's like this right because uh, the internal permutations of these balls don't matter right so it's it's an identical problem uh except as if uh but the only with the word that has the same multiplicity of every letter right which mississippi is not one and uh, i think it would be hard to find uh, a word like this a long word that has only three letters and each of them at exact same multiplicity all right so so that would form uh, you know one of the, those quadrants in the, in our diagram and what if all of those balls are gray so what if all of those are balls are the same and you still have this constraint that you have to place the same number in every bin okay so that's a kind of a joke question because there's no choices here right so once it's already constrained there's no choice to be made every bin ha has to be filled with the same number of balls it doesn't matter what balls because they're all the same so what are the choices here none there's only one such arrangement so uh, these are the remaining quadrants right and now you see in this unified way um maybe all or maybe there is one i forget about but many of the counting um uh, counting types that we have seen okay so i will um, excuse me now i will talk about inclusion and exclusion okay chapter section 11 um you can you know go away and close your ears and eyes if you really want to skip it now but it's not long it's kind of nice so maybe you you want to stick around okay so uh, it starts with the uh, the sum rule so we know that if you have to count all elements in a union of a bunch of sets so you have some elements with some proper property ai a1 elements of type a2 and you want to count all of them 
Well, if there is no intersections between these types, you just count each separately and you add. But what happens if they're not pairwise disjoint? So if uh, these uh, sets are intersecting, that's the inclusion exclusion principle. Okay, so let's uh, give an example. Uh, you have uh, strings of words of length six uh, over an alphabet with three letters, A, B, C. And you're, said, you're told that they either start, they start with either C or a D. Okay, so you're counting really two sets. Set A1, all six character strings will start with C. And a string, set A2, six character strings that start with D. Now you're in luck because these two sets are uh, independent. They cannot intersect. There is no word that starts both with C and with D, right? That such string does not exist. So nice, you count independently. How many of such, you fix one character, the remaining five are free from this alphabet. So there's three to the five of uh, these. And likewise, there are three to the five of those because the truth, this character that you start with is fixed. It doesn't matter what it is. So that's your answer. Uh, but what if I change the, the constraint? They start with C or end with C, these six, uh, six character words. So now it's uh, not so nice because they intersect. You can have strings that start with C and also end with C. So the, un the size of this union is smaller than the two sets. It would be the two sets com combined, right, added the cardinality of these two sets if they were separate. But if they are combined, well, then if you add, you overcount. You overcount those which are inside, right, of both in the intersection. But that inclusion exclusion is easy. You just subtract those which are in the intersection. So let's see. Uh, okay, so the answer here would be again the multiplicity is cardinality of these sets we already established. And what about this one? Well, um, there is only uh, this is a set. You have to kind of see what this set is, right? Well, what is this set? It's a set of words that satisfy both constraints, right? Because they belong into this and into this. So they satisfy both constraints. So these are six character strings that start with C and end with C. Well, but that's easy. So you fix two characters in a string. If the first one C, the last one C, how many choices remain? Four, they are unconstrained. So this is the multiplicity, the cardinality of this set. And you subtract, subtract it. Why is it? Why, is, why do you subtract? Well, it's easy to see on the picture. So the general formula is this. Cardinality of the union is the cardinality of set P1 plus cardinality of P2 minus the intersection. Because if you think of this, right, you have to add everything that is purely blue, everything that is purely orange, and the stuff that is both. If you just add the cardinality of P1 and cardinality of P2, you're adding these guys in the middle twice. So you just have to subtract them once in order so the remaining is the blue plus once the mixed plus the purely orange, right? Um, so this is the, the general formula, right? Um, that, we, that we used on the previous slide. Uh, okay, uh, let's do another example. How many five card poker hands in 52 card deck have exactly one king or exactly one ace or both? Because not an exclusive or. Okay, um, so okay, so let's look. So you have these two sets. One is five card hands with exactly one king. The other is five card hand with exactly one ace. And clearly they can intersect, right? Because you can have a five card hand that has uh, one king and one ace. So let's, uh, uh, so you know that the, in, you, you can count those that belong to the union of these two sets, which are 
this, right? This is the, they're asking you here to count the union, to, what's the cardinality of the union of these two sets? That's the question. And you have to count the individual ones and subtract the size of the intersection. Okay, so let's, let's see. What's the cardinality of a one? There are four ways to choose the king, right? For suit. And 48 choose four uh, ways to choose the remaining four cards, right? It just has to be not a king, that's all. So you kick out four cards from the deck of 52, and that's where you choose your four. A, a two is the same story, right? Because it sort of doesn't matter whether it's a king or an ace, it's the exact same um, way of counting. What about uh, counting this set? Okay, so let's see what it is, right? Oh, it should be A1 intersection A2 here. All right, so the, the, what is this set? Well, it's a set of cards that have exactly one king and exactly one ace. So you have to choose the king four ways. You have to choose the ace four ways, and you have to choose the remaining three cards out of 44 because you kick out all the kings and you kick out all the aces. The remaining three cards cannot be either a king or an ace, right? Because the constraint is exactly one king. In the intersection, the constraint is exactly one king and exactly one ace. So there's 44 to three of the remaining, for the remaining cards. So don't do this too quick, okay? Again, I will not put this stuff on the test, but this is really good things to know. Uh, so you just have to be careful as to what are you now choosing? It is related to these, but okay, it is an instance of the similar problem, right? With, um, but, but here in this case, you're, you're choosing from the reduced set now, right? Uh, so this will be the general formula. I mean, uh, sorry, this will be the particular answer using the general formula, uh, which is this. Okay, uh, some more examples. How many binary strings of length 10 uh, there are that start with a zero or have exactly five ones or both? because it's a standard or. Okay, so you have two sets. The set of 10-bit strings which start with zero and the ten sets of 10-bit strings that have exactly one, five ones. And you note that these two sets intersect. The, the intersection is not empty. So you will use this inclusion exclusion to count the cardinality of the union of these two sets, which is the answer here. Okay, so let's count. A1, how many strings there are of this type? Where you fix a zero uh, and you have nine bits that are free. So it's two to the nine, right? Because it's just how many nine bit strings there are. Um, now A2, you have 10 bit string and you choose exactly five ones, you have to place them somewhere, right? So it's uh, 10 bins with five balls that are identical, or ones, and the constraint no more than one ball in a bin. So you're just choosing five bins out of 10, right? So this is the, uh, the answer. And now what about the intersection? Okay, so what is the intersection? The intersection are strings that start with zero and have exactly five ones, both. And that's easier to count than the or stuff, right? Because they have to satisfy all both constraints. So you fix first, you first fix the first bit, it has to be a zero by this constraint. And the other constraint tells you that five of the remaining bits have to be ones. Well, there's so many ways to choose five bits out of nine to place the ones in, right? So the general answer is that. I, sorry, not again, not the general answer, the, the final answer using the general formula instantiated here. Okay. Um, how many strings of length six 
uh, over alphabet ABC have at least five consecutive A's. Okay, a funny constraint, but let's look at that. So, well, there is basic, there's two, two sets of the strings that satisfy this. There are either strings that start with five A's and because they're of length six, have unconstrained last character or strings of this type and they intersect. What is the intersection? It's a single string that looks like this. It's both in here and in here. So uh, multiplicity of these individual sets is three because there's just one character that is unconstrained, right? It can be A, B, or C. A, B, or C. And of course, this intersection is a singleton. It only has this one string in it. So this is the final answer, right? Okay, you can check it by hand, um, right? Counting these strings. Um, now, what happens if you have three sets? Well, you add them individual cardinalities, you subtract pairwise cardinalities of pairwise intersection, and then you add cardinality of three-way intersection. Why is that? Okay, look at these sets, okay? Cardinality of A is this remainder plus the intersection, and now intersection with B, right? But the intersection itself can be also split. I and X are the pairwise intersection of A and B, but X is the three-way intersection between A, B, and C. So when I count the cardinality, I want to count these individual regions independently. I want to count all the R R1, all the R2, all the R3, and then all I, all J, all K, and all X. Uh, but if I count, if, if I look at the first term by itself, look what happens. I get R1 once, and R2 I get once, and R3 I get once, but how many I's did I get? Actually twice. I got them once as a part of A, and once as part of B. And that will be the same with K and with J. I get all of those guys three, twice. And I get X three times. Once as part of A, once as part of B, and once as part of C. Okay, if I correct by kicking out the sizes of these intersections, then what happens? Let's compute the pairwise intersections. Well, these intersections are I x, I and x is here, and k and x is here, and j and x is in the intersection of b and c. So I did count i, j, and k once, but again I counted x three times. So if I just take this thing, which is this one, and subtract pairwise intersections, cardinalities of pairwise intersections, I would, I would correct this part. So instead of two i plus j plus k, I would have one because I would subtract this part, but I would kill off x. There will be no x. That's why I have to add this back. And now when I take s1 minus the pairwise intersection plus the three-way intersections, I get the correct thing. Okay. And um, if there is more sets, then the signs will just alternate. And I will, if there is four sets, then I will subtract now, I will have here all the three-way intersections, which there will be four possible ones for four sets. Pairwise intersections for four sets will be four choose two. And then finally, I will subtract the pairwise, the all four-way intersections. And if there is five more, I just have more of these. I add, I subtract, I add, I subtract the next um, k-wise intersections. And then k plus one interse way intersections, I take with an opposite sign. Okay, let's uh, see some examples. So say you have a drug test on a population of 1,000 people. And there's three symptoms, A, B, C, three different uh, things you test. Uh, okay, you, uh, three symptoms you observe. And you told that 
cardinality of first symptom is 122, second 88, third 112, but the pairwise uh, cardinalities are also given, and the three-way cardinality, which symptom occurred, that there was uh, so many people were in the intersection of has a symptom A, has a symptom B, and has a symptom C sets. So how many people are there in total who got any symptom, right? It's the cardinality of the union of A, B, C. And we can count it because cardinality of the union is the cardinality of the individual sets minus cardinality of pairwise intersections plus cardinality of three-way intersection. So given all these numbers, we can exactly compute this, right? It's as if uh, we were told here, what is the total A, total B, total C? And we are also told what's the total K plus X, total I plus X, total K X plus J. And also we are told what's X. Well, that fixes all of these variables. So therefore we can compute it, right, using this formula. We have enough data here. Okay, uh, so here is a more, com I mean, okay, an example that uh, relates to some other counting problems that we have done. So let's look at it because even if we don't have exactly this problem, but it's still about counting um, people line, lined up. So let's say you have seven people, mother, father, three sons, two daughters. How many lineups of this family are there? where mother is next to at least one of her three sons. Okay, so let's have uh, these three sets to be, set AI is a lineup where mother is next to son I. These sets could intersect because you could be next to son one and next to son three. Uh, so these are the pairwise intersections. And uh, well, I can still write this expression, right? The intersection of three sets, but this will be simple because this will be an empty set. You cannot have a lineup where the mother is, which satisfies all three constraints at the same time, right? Because there's only left and right of the mother. So she cannot be next to all three sons. Uh, let's count these sets. How many lineups when she's next to son I? It's six factorial twice. Because how do we do these? We look at mother and son I as a unit. And if we treat mother followed by son I as a unit, then it's just six units, permutation over six units, where this mother and son I are conjoined. Or you also have to take in a reverse order where they line up, right? So it's son followed by mother. That's why I'm taking two of these permutations over six elements. Uh, now, what about uh, mother is next to both sons? Well, uh, here are the possible solutions. Let's treat son I, mother, son J as a unit, and let's treat SJ and SI as a unit. Either case is a problem of now you have this extra unit where three of the seven people became one unit, right? So how many units there are? Five, right? It's the four remaining people and this conjoined monstrous entity of a son, mother, and another son, mm -hmm. always walking, you know, conjoined, right? So it's five factorial. And there's two of them because one using this unit and one using that unit, right? And the three-way intersection, as we said, is empty. Uh, so this is your final answer, right? It's three of these. So it's two six factorial, two, twice six factorial times three. It's three of these. So three times two, fact, two times five factorial. And uh, well, it simplifies to, to that if you want, okay? Uh, well, here is another uh, more general, even more general example. So uh, have uh, at least four consecutive A's. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. No, this this is not so hard. But okay, so there are three. Uh, these are the three sets. Um, you can. These are the pairwise intersections, and there is a three-way intersection. And the ways to count it, right, is uh, there's six square of these, and six square of these, and six square of these, because it's an alphabet of six, and there is two positions. So uh, each of them is six square, and there is three of them. So boom, you have that. Uh, these are six of both of all of this, six of these, and one of these. Right? Look there as asymmetrical because if I intersect this set with this set, I get only one string. All A's. And there is something in the three-way intersection, right? It's that string again. So you have to kind of be clear about this. It's hard to do this all in the head. You have to write out these things, count them by the book. Um, otherwise, you're likely to make a mistake. Um, uh, here is a very sweet application to uh, prime, uh, to counting primes in a way. Uh, so. Remember primality choice, like, uh, well, we could choose a uh, prime by like, okay, let's eliminate all, let's, okay, all te test primality. How about you eliminate all divisible by put two, eliminate all divisible by three, uh, by the next prime and so right. How many elements in a range you eliminated? How many are left? And these will be primes, right? So let's do it in a limited way. Let's just eliminate just multiples of two, three, and seven. And let's count how many in this arbitrary uh, range are already kicked out by this, right? These are not all the primes here, right? Because I should also kick out multiples of five, of 11, 13. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because all of those multiplicities will be here. Uh, well, okay, some will be, will be now. Um, yeah, but fives I should definitely kick out, right? Um, uh, so, uh, okay. So let's let's look. Um, so a one is a set of elements that are zero modulo two, and a two is all those that are zero modulo three, and these are zero modulo seven. Uh, the intersection, there are zero modulo both two and three. There's zero mod six. The residue, well, though, okay. I mean, uh, how can a number be both divisible by two and by three? This number must be divisible by six. How can a number be divisible by two and by seven? It must be divisible by 14. So it's zero mod 14. And both by three and seven, well, it's zero mod 21. Um, and the intersection is just zero mod 42, right? Because it has to be divisible by two, three, and seven. If I multiply them, it's six times seven is 42. So um, the, those which are um, divisible by one of them is uh, those which are in the union of A1, A2, A3. And how do I count the size of this union? Inclusion, exclusion principle. I add the cardinalities of individual sets. I subtract the cardinalities of pairwise intersections. And I add cardinality of three-way intersection. So um, the number of elements in here are the number of those which are zero mod two. So it's every other. So it's 42 divided by two. Those which are zero mod three is every third. So it will be this many. Those which are zero mod seven, this many. And uh, so forth, right? Because this, this is like, if this is how I define the problem, it's just, it's clearly like the, the ones who are zero are every sixth or every 14th. And I chose these numbers so that, 42 has a round multiplicity of either of these factors and therefore also their products. 
so that you don't have to do ceilings here at any place, right? You, you is exactly all of these are integers. And the triple intersection uh, in this range, the only guy who is zero mod 42 is 42. So I only add one, right? So I add these, subtract these pairwise, add the triple, and I get 30. Uh, so majority of this interval, right? Like, uh, well, like half the interval is, multiply, is, is uh, divisible by two, uh, right? But, but here you, you know um, this fraction exactly. And if you have a four-way four intersection, uh, right, so if you were counting cardinality of a four, union of four sets, you add their individual cardinalities, you subtract pairwise cardinalities, you add three-way, and you subtract four-way, and that's how it would go uh, for uh, larger. You can see how, how it generalizes. So um, let's take um, elements, the um uh, so let's say that each of the individual elements has uh, sets have 15 elements but you're told what are the pairwise intersections and you're told what are the three-way intersections cardinalities and also you're told the four-way intersection and now you ask well how many of these elements are there so if these intersections were all empty then you would know that the total number is 60, 15 of all the sets, but they're not empty. Okay, so what's the size of the union? Well, the four individual sets minus cardinalities of all the pairwise intersections and how many of these pairwise intersections there are, four choose two. You can, for each two of these four sets, there is a pairwise intersection. And each three-way, how many three-way intersections there are? four to three, that's how many three-way intersections you have to now add, the pair, pairwise intersections you subtract it, and then again you subtract at the end the cardinality of the four-way intersection, so this would be the solution. Um, I believe this is all I have, yes. Okay, um, thank you for your time, uh, and uh, see you tomorrow at uh, the last lecture um, before the test on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Thursday. All right, uh, good night.